Welcome to another day of the challenge. And today we are going to figure out whether you can work a room without the use of alcohol. Now, of course, I know that the answer is, of course you can. But in case you have a little bit of doubt in your mind as to whether you'll still be able to be as confident as you think you feel when you're uh, drinking alcohol, uh, I've brought in a wonderful woman, an author by the name of Susan Rowan, who is the author of this wonderful book, How to Work a Room. And in fact, it's my signed copy right here. It sure is, yeah. <laughs> Susan, how are you? Great to have you here. Well, I'm delighted to be back because you're focusing on one of my favorite subjects of that How to Work a Room book, for which I've been called a bit of a killjoy, but I know we are right. <laughs> Absolutely. So how to work a room without the use of alcohol as a crutch. So we're going to talk about three main tips here, Susan. You are the queen of people skills and social skills and how to make people like you and how to come across as confident and, and how to deal in any kind of social situation. So let me just start by asking the first question before we get into the three tips. Okay. Do you need alcohol to come across as confident and social? Uh, is, it a, is, it a, is it a positive like people think it is? Is it a negative? I mean, I know, again, I know the answer is obvious, but like, what are your thoughts on alcohol in terms of whether it, someone can be good in social skills or not? Well, if you have good social skills, and here's the bottom line, if you like people, whether you're shy, whether you're introverted, that doesn't matter, is do you like people? Do you want to meet people? So if that's the case, that's the number one trait that you need to have. Believe me, honestly, James, I know people that have said to me, I don't even like people. Well, you'll, you can pour alcohol over your head. You're still <laughs> not going to be good at working a room because what you'll convey is your disdain or disinterest. Yeah. So if you're interested and you like people and you see people as fonts of information, fun, laughter, ideas, that's what you need. In terms of alcohol, well... I've been asked this a lot because some people say companies, there's a, a, a drinking culture. And so they don't want to feel left out. I am here to tell you, I, am, I have some really great skills. One of them is not cooking. One of them is not drinking. I'm not good at it. Plus, I'm, I'm tiny. I'm 4'11", so I don't have a lot of places to put it. And if I have my choice of the calories from alcohol or chocolate chip cookies, guess who wins? Yeah. So I don't do it. Plus, it's very, when you have a drink in your hand and it's a refreshed drink all through the event, the first thing to realize is that people notice you're never without a drink. And you may think they don't pay attention, but what's the message you're giving? So the number one question you ask yourself is, what's the impression I want to leave? Yeah. What is it that I want to visually convey? Okay. Okay, great. All right. So that was a great introduction there, Susan. I love that. Like, let's just go through these three tips. The first thing, the first tip that you have on how to work a room without alcohol. Is, <laughs> here's what I do. I have them put my water in like a wine glass <clears throat> and then maybe put a lemon, you know, on the side or a, a, so if you really think you need to, excuse me, <clears throat> if you really think you need to look, you can have water, you know, with lemon or uh, uh, lime. That's one thing. Um, I, I'll often tease a bartender and say, can I please look like a grown-up? <laughs> uh, but it's really water. So it's, if that is the culture and you want people to think you're drinking, how does water look different from vodka? Yeah. But, so that's one thing, because that is some people have said to me, that's a concern. I don't want to look like a teetotaler. I don't want to look like a snob. Um, but I have a friend, and this is on a sidebar, who had had a benign tumor removed. He loved to have a nice social drink and cocktail at every event. It does not mix with the medicines that he has to take yeah. and has taken for 20 years. So I want to say this another tip. This is to the people that are with those of us who really don't drink at events. If you see us drinking a Diet Coke or a glass of cranberry juice, it isn't your business to ask us what the problem is. Really, leave us alone. You never know. We could be on medication. We could be 
in recovery, we could have an allergic reaction and it's not conversation. So it's none of your business. <laughs> well said, Susan. Well said. All right. So the first tip there is put water in your wine glass or put a, uh, put a lemon on the side. If you're drinking soda water, you put the little lime thing over the, the edge of the glass and you have it in one of those sm smaller uh, glasses where they serve vodka and soda water. No one knows the difference. So you can be a little bit sneaky about it if, if you like, if you don't want to come across as being the, the, the teetotaler. So a great first tip there. What's tip number two, Susan? Well, tip number two is, and this is a, whether you're whatever, even if it's Diet Coke, don't have ice in the glass. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people have ice in their glass and then they'll go to shake someone's hands and they'll all really have clammy, cold hands. <laughs> so no ice. So that's, uh, but that's not the not drinking. The other one is, if you prepare, James, before you go to any event, I don't care if it's a friend's wedding, if it's a business event, it's a fundraiser. When you prepare, as I've said in How to Work Room in like 300 pages, and I'm giving you the quiz later because I know you have the book, is if you prepare, read, go online, look and see what's in the news, look and see what's um, Google people. You will have so much confidence. If you know what's going on in the world, we're doing this 30 days challenge and over the 30 days we've had the Super Bowl, we're gonna have the Grammys, there's been sports events, there's you know books coming out and a movie coming out I've heard a lot about that I'm not going to see because I'm approved. <laughs> no, I'm kidding about that. Um, and you just see what I did. If you know what's going on, you can throw in your 50 shades of green if you like. But when you're prepared, you don't need that glass. Here's the other thing I would say, and this is maybe adjacent to this. If you prepare and you feel confident and you know what you're going to talk about and you're interested in people, alcohol will cloud your judgment. Right. It will let your filters get unfiltered. Yeah. So what's going to come out of your mouth is stuff you would never say if you had your filter's all working if you had your good manners in place because you'll be so well mutt and hearty and maybe you'll even slur a few words. I was at a football game and a young woman I met was slurring her words. And I'm like, this is at a college stadium when there's no alcohol. I looked at her kind of way out of place. So, and maybe that's a generational thing, but really alcohol will limit your filtering and you need your filtering. Yeah, absolutely. So tip number two there was be prepared with conversation, essentially. Have lots to say. Know what's going on in the world. Be interested in the other person and be interesting. So before you go into a room, you know, you're a bit worried or oh, don't have alcohol, I'm a bit shy. Right, okay, what's going on in the world right now? I need some conversation topics. Okay, that Super Bowl was interesting. All right, that was interesting. Oh, yeah, okay, yep, all right. Okay, I know what's going on in the world. That way I've got a few little things that I can bounce off over the course of the evening. So just to, to review yes. that, number two is be, uh, be prepared with conversation. Susan, moving right along, what's the third tip you've got for us? And the third tip is if you, if you are going to drink, and you can, and you can, you know, live one. But for people doing the 30-day challenge, you will find that when you walk into a room without alcohol, you're going to see and observe more. So I would say is make it a different, um, I guess, focus. See how much you can learn and see. Make it a learning experience here. What are you going to hear? What are you going to make mental note of? Because in this 30-day challenge, and for, for many of us, it's the rest of our life, you are going to be the recipient of more knowledge and observations and more context. How about this? Really think about this. It, if you are totally aware and not drinking, people are going to be more likely to introduce you to other people because they can be confident in your behavior. Mm -hmm. If you had your little two drinks and you haven't had enough to eat, sometimes we get sloppy, not because we are drinking so much, it's because we have, there's nothing in our stomach. So if you go to an event hungry, you could have like even one drink and you could really be off-putting enough that someone wouldn't want to introduce you to that person you've determined you want to meet. So that's my other hint for the day. And here's the other part. When you are doing this 30-day challenge, 
you are going to be more confident in introducing people to each other because you're going to remember what it is about them you wanted to say as to why you wanted them to meet. Yeah, I like that. So number three there is just focus on how much you're about to learn about yourself. Focus on how more in tune you're going to be with sounds and visions and conversations and people. Uh, people are going to pick up on that. They're going to be more inclined to want to introduce you, to bring you into their social circle. It's going to be a lot easier for you to pick up on things because you're concentrating and therefore introduce the person you've been speaking to, to someone else, who, and maybe they share similar interests. So remember that when you walk in there, even though you might be a little bit awkward, or you might feel a bit awkward because you're used to having alcohol as that, as that crux, just understand that if you focus on all the benefits you're about to get of the new stimuli, the new stimuli of focus, of sounds, of vision, of conversations, you are just going to be so much more likable, so much more approachable, and you're going to have far better and deeper and less trivial conversations. Um, so great tips there. Do you want to just give us one more bonus tip, Susan? On well, I thought of the metaphor because, you know, the idea of alcohol as a crutch. Well, if we look at that, alcohol actually kicks the crutch out from under you, and then you can stumble and fall. So that's the metaphor is that you are totally in control of yourself with, without it. Um, the other thing about um, alcohol is if someone does say something and they notice you're not drinking, here's what you could do is say, I've joined James on his 30 day challenge. <laughs> and then turn the conversation into something else that takes the focus off of you. And there you go. It's like before we started, I said to you, I live near the wine country, but I wine kind of burns my throat so what I do is go to up there when they have chocolate tastings so <laughs> there we switch the subject um, you know if you go everywhere with the idea of I'm gonna have fun I'm gonna meet great people you don't need alcohol but if you're having a party and you don't have chocolate don't even bother to invite me <laughs> I like your style Susan I'm a big fan <laughs> 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 you and I laugh all the time. Here's the other thing. James and I, when we're talking to each other, we're smiling and laughing the whole time. We really, And that's what I want you to do. I want you to go places and instead of, here's the crutch. Instead of having the alcohol in the glass, have the smile on the face. Oh, that's awesome. more inviting for conversation than, oh, look, it's gin. Unless you're playing cards, who wants to hear that? <laughs> well, Susan, thank you so much. Susan Rowan, remember, uh, make sure you check out her book, How to Work a Room. I've got my signed copy. Let me just show you. There was a beautiful little note that, uh, that Susan sent. Right on the title page. Yeah, I've got to try and find it here. Hang on. I'm stumbling. That's okay. Then I can say you can also get this on audio and ebook for your iPad, Nook, or Kindle. Oh, there you go. Beautiful, there it little, is. beautiful little note there from Susan. So, Susan, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Just to review, Number one, put water in a wine glass, put lemon on the side. You can just hide it if you want, for, you know, make people think that you're drinking alcohol even though you're not. Number two, be prepared with great conversation. Have lots to say. Know what's going in the world. Be interesting and interested in other people. And then number three, focus on how much you're about to learn about yourself, how much you're going to react to new stimuli that you ordinarily wouldn't even notice, like sounds and people and conversations. And if you do those things um, after a while and you do that 30 days consistently during your 30 day challenge, then you're going to find a whole new world of conversation and people and relationships out there. Please leave a comment right now below this video. Just go down below and tell me uh, one thing that you are going to do when you walk into a bar or a club or a pub or a restaurant or whatever now when you're not drinking to try and prepare for having social conversation and, uh, and, and meeting new people. Then go over or go over to the closed Facebook group and write the same thing or share your experience. Remember, this is a community. You want to continue on helping and inspiring other people. Susan Rowan from How to Work a Room. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, as always. This has been fun for me. You are welcome, my dear friend. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. See you. Take care.